Yeah, I, I always wonder, like, I, th I think it's so miraculous that I'm here and I can go back and I can, I can think about the close calls and, and a couple of really violent situations come up for me when I'm, when I'm thinking about this. And one of them is one that I've been thinking about lately and kind of sharing about at meetings and stuff. You know, I came from a pretty violent background and, and for me, mm. for me, it wasn't uncommon to be either watching violence, a part of violence, or creating violence. It, it wasn't uncommon, whether it was a Tuesday night, a Friday night, whether we had started drinking yet, or if it was going to or from a drug dealer, or any of that stuff. Um, it was just a part of my daily life for the most part. And it's weird because I came from such a small town in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Such a small town in, in comparison to even where I live now. Oh, the, sure. The place I live now is four times the size of the town that I grew up in. But, um, it, we were, we were a rough crowd. We were, we were a rough gang of kids and, and, uh, what was the name of that first gang? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, we, we, uh, you're not going to share it. No, <laughs> um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we were, I think we were like 10 or 11 yeah, when, we, when we started wanting to be gangsters. I mean, yeah. Uh, there was something attractive to that lifestyle and, and, and we would backyard fight and, and all that stuff. And as, as drugs and alcohol came along, like, like in Jen's story, you know, huffing was, was early for me. Yeah. You know, it started, you know, that was something that she shares in her story. Mm -hmm. And so like huffing gas, huffing rubber cement, huffing glue, huffing Freon, you know, anything that could take us away from the way that we felt about ourselves. And I didn't know that that's what we were doing. We were just trying to have fun and, yeah. and be a part of. Yeah. It didn't. It didn't seem like. It didn't seem like there was a dysfunction involved with it. But I can look back now and see that there was. But there was one particular night, and I think God was doing for a lot of people what none of us could do for ourselves because, you know, we started day drinking early. Um, I think I was probably twenty or twenty one at the time, and. Um, uh, I was hanging out with this specific group of people and some of them were, were doing heavy drugs. Some of them were just smoking pot. Some of them were smoking pot and drinking. And, and I could kind of bounce around between all those groups. And, um, we started drinking early that day. And a lot of us knew each other for a very long time since we were little kids and we'd, we'd spread apart and come back together at different mm -hmm. times. You know, somebody would go to jail or prison or juvie. They'd come back. Their parents would move them to a, a family member's <laughs> house outside of, <laughs> outside of the state. They would come back. And every time somebody came back from one of those places, we would either get along or we wouldn't, you know, depending on where they went and what they came back as. You know, some people would move to a different city and come back as a different gang member wearing a different color or whatever. And we would, we would play the part. We would play whatever that part is and, uh, there was one particular friend that that we were we were uh, harassing that day for whatever reason. I can't remember. You know, Chuck had a problem with Ryan, and we were day drinking. We were all drunk, and went up to his house and started harassing him. And 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 Ryan had a big brother that was notorious for being a fighter. Hmm. Right, his name was Jake, and and um, he. Like, like the story was this guy knocked out a horse, right? Like, like oh, this, yeah. <laughs> this guy was, Jake was nobody to fuck. Nobody fucked with Jake. I feel like that's such a small town. You know? Like, like he, <laughs> uh, and, and I, I had watched Jake fight a couple people and, and, uh, like I said, violence was, was common. And, and so we were harassing him anyway. Like we fucked around and n n no harm really. Just, just, I'm, I mean, probably emotionally I look back on it now and his feelings were hurt or whatever. But then we went to a party that night <laughs> and, and, uh, that was also not uncommon, you know, just go to a party and it, it, it was supposed to be a fun night. We had the girls over, we had plenty of liquor, um, no thought of earlier that day. We were already drinking yeah. and partying. Mm -hmm. And so we're starting to party. The girls are starting to loosen up and, uh, we're all starting to have a good time. And, all of a sudden, Jake shows up over at this house, right, banging on the door, fucking screaming at everybody. And I, I kind of forgot that we were fucking with his brother. And so I go outside, what up, Jake? Blah, blah. You know, just, <laughs> just kind of, he, and he's like, ah, he's all mad. I'm like, what are you mad about, bro? And then, and then Bailey comes running out of his house with a shotgun. 
and he had this little single shot 12 gauge shotgun and everything happened really fast but he came out he put that gun to jake's head i grabbed it i pulled it up and he pulled the trigger and it went off right above jake's head everybody scattered it was it was super loud um jake ended up tackling him he kicked his eyeball in thankfully it was a single shot we all kind of took off in different directions and and uh for for whatever reason um nobody got murdered that night and and it was that close yeah and 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 it wasn't even something that i had thought much about i was kind of bummed that the party got ruined Mm -hmm. you know and so um you know like like what would my life be today if if he would have blew jake's brains out all over over and over what you know just such such insignificant behavior there there was no there was no reason for any of it none of it and there's so many examples of my life being close like that you know i went on uh i started hanging out later with this guy named cell phone ray and um i love it yeah and, and and the reason he was called that is because he could go and he'd go and dive through these dumpsters and get people's information out of like like bank dumpsters and shit and he'd get people's information out of there and then he would hook up cell phones illegally you know like he, he knew how to do that and so you could get burner phones from this guy and um and i was hanging out with him and he like went to go meet these people and I was like, I want to go with you. And he's like, no, I got to go alone tonight. And he came back and he, he came back and he, his clothes were ripped and he had these little circles, just these little blood circles around his face where they were punching him with a gun. And, um, they robbed him and, and punched him, pistol whipped him with this gun. And then we went out after that looking for these people. Mm-hmm. Right. And I never found them. And I, and, and I can look back at my willingness to do these violent crimes and, and be a part of this lifestyle where it never ended like tragically. It ended, you know, somewhat safely, I guess, you know, because I'm, I, I didn't kill anybody yeah. and I'm not in prison for any of that stuff. And, and the people are still alive at the moment that that happened. But I had no control over myself at that right. time. I was so involved in drugs and, and maintaining my buzz that I was willing to be a part of all these really dangerous things. And and when I talk to like a therapist or a professional about this stuff, they're like, Wow, you kinda loved a fucked up life. And I and I go back and I'm like, Well, you know, that was a Thursday. Like, <laughs> Should have seen what happened on Friday. Yeah. Kind kind of thing, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um I had no control over the outcome of any of that stuff or my behavior in it that I couldn't, I couldn't not be in those positions because like Jen, like Jen talked about, like, no matter my desire for a better way of life, I couldn't do it on my own. Yeah, I couldn't. And it took all these instances. It took where at one time I wanted that stuff and I invited those things into my life, but I wanted those things on my terms. You know, I wanted drugs and alcohol and women and money and flashy shit because I thought it was going to make me something. I thought it was going to make me complete. And then I end up having those things to an extent, but the negative came in more and more uninvitedly, Mm -hmm. right? It was just more and more of the negative. Like we've said so many different times on the show, it went from fun and fun with problems and then just problems. Yeah. And so I agree with you, what you said, you know, getting sober after a lifestyle, a lifetime of that kind of shit Mm -hmm. is definitely God doing for me what I couldn't do for myself because at the end, the desire was there. I think the willingness was there, but the ability wasn't. Yeah. 